Hello there, and welcome to the tour of the Combat Speeder of the first run Addendum Hover Vehicles series. My name is Wimperman, and I'm the Chief Designer, Chief Builder, Chief Architect, and Chief Dumbass of the Combat Speeder project. Uh, here is this new vehicle here. As I said, it's a Combat Speeder, so it's a single person armed transport. Now before I take you through the features of this vehicle, despite the fact that it is a new vehicle, there are some original vehicles to show you. And they are over here. So let me pop the HUD back on. This one here is the original hover driller that was built before the game was released. And this was the refit hover driller that I built in December 2022 when I was refitting all of the vehicles and for those of you who haven't seen the refitting of video for this vehicle I do mention while I'm building it that I like the way this looks I think it looks like a sci-fi speeder that you might see in something like Star Wars and that I would probably do a combat speeder version of it um, I would say that I have actually replaced the drills with Gatling guns and the drill turret with a Gatling turret underneath just for while I was building this one <laughs> but uh, you know for CPU and that kind of shizzle um, so it, it was a mining vehicle now those of you who have seen the newest hover driller will know that I decided to replace this one with a completely new vehicle as the mining vehicle hover driller because when I came to build this I didn't want to leave it with all round shapes when I came to build the hover uh, hang on when I came to build the combat speeder I should say I didn't want to use the round block shapes like I have done with this because that would then have made this the in, the only vehicle in all of my hover vehicles that uses rounded shapes. And I didn't think that made any sense. So I wanted to go with the angular shapes like this hover driller. But I knew in my brain hole that I couldn't replace the round shapes with angular shapes. And not end up with a vehicle that looks exactly like this. Now, because this already looks too much like a fast vehicle, I decided that it should be a fast vehicle, and I made a more industrial looking one to be the Hover Driller. Story time with Wimpover. I also mentioned, sorry, it's not over, that uh, this new one should be basically a step up from this open top hover speeder here. Uh, and you can sort of see it is. So because it's a combat speeder, I decided that there should be some blocks around the driver's seat just to protect you from incoming fire a bit more. Because if I'd left it out, yeah, I mean, look how vulnerable the driver would be in this. And it ended up looking a little bit like the hover buggy, which I'm quite happy about. Mm -hmm. It's facing the wrong way, but never mind. So, yeah, it's it sort of looks like it's a relation of both of these now, which is kind of cool. Right, let me take you through the features of this new vehicle. Oh, the, the, a new version of an old vehicle that was a new version of an old vehicle. Uh, starting with its role and its task equipment. So, as I said, it's a combat speeder. So it's a single seat, armed fast transport so its armament is provided by three Gatling turrets and four Gatling dun, ga, ga, dun, dun, ga, guns these, <laughs> these two Gatling turrets at the back are set to point defense and the settings are thus and the other one is set to anti-personnel, which is set to that. That's the... Oh, I haven't actually shown you that yet. There, it's under the chin, under there. Uh, so that's the armed bit of the armed fast transport. Now, 
there will be, of course, other fast transports built by other people which are of course faster because they'll have more thrusters and of course it it's so because there is a speed limit in the game it's only acceleration up to that maximum speed but there will be vehicles that are faster but this is one of the fastest in my lineup anyway so uh, its propulsion forward wise is provided by three tier one large thrusters Aye. So that's the equipment it uses to fulfill its armed fast transport role. Loud noise. Yes. So, the next we uh, the next thing we need to talk about and we did actually touch on a bit of it is its propulsion and lift capacity. So, we've already talked about its forward, let's talk about its reverse. Two tier one large for its reverses at the front underneath the Gatling guns. And then for its lateral thrust it has two medium tier ones and two smalls pointing in each direction. Now, uh, I'll cover that in a bit actually. But well, <laughs> I was going to talk about you could add a couple more if you can figure out the CPU. But we'll cover that later on. Uh, hover engines, it has eight of them, two in each corner, and it has four jump boosters, as I call them. Uh, its lift capacity with those four, no, those eight uh, hover engines, it can lift 163.2 tons in one g of gravity. <laughs> Here I go again. The second fear. The second video where I put the word gravity at the end of the G, even though the G stands for gravity. In 2Gs, it can lift 81.6 tons, and in 4Gs, it can lift 40.8 tons. Now, the vehicle itself weighs 16.6 tons. So, in 4G, uh, that, would that would double it, wouldn't it? No, quadruple it. Yeah, so it wouldn't operate in 4G because the vehicle itself would weigh more. <laughs> but there you go, at least you know now. Uh, it would operate in 2Gs, however. So 33.2 tonnes it would be. And it could lift another almost 48-ish tonnes. Hmm, so there we go. That's that bit out of the way. Next, we shall talk about its power, fuel and air. So, its power is provided by a single large generator and its fuel, it has seven large fuel tanks. There's one in the middle here, then two uh, to the sides of it, behind it, and then a, uh, on each side, I should say, and then behind those is another two one on each side, there and there. They're on either side of the middle thruster on the back. Oh, and sorry, I almost forgot, there is a small fuel tank behind this shutter that you can access to put in the fuel by hand if you like. Airwise, there is none, except for whatever might be in the atmosphere of the world you're driving around. Uh, it, there are no O2 tanks, there's no O2 station either, and obviously because it's an open cockpit vehicle, there are no ventilators. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a nice and easy bit of the video to explain. Next then, we will talk about its interior and its construction. Well, it doesn't really have an interior, so <laughs> it sort of has a cage around the seat, but there's not really an interior, it's open. Um, but the view you get is that. And uh, the camera is actually higher than the player model's head. So there is some protection by the glass window in front of you. Uh, yeah, the, I think the camera itself is actually above the seat. So it, it's quite high up. Um, Construction-wise... It's mostly steel, and 
the block shapes I've used are full blocks or... Oh, actually, it's not. It's sort of a combination. So it's variations of the full block, like these. And across the top here are half blocks. That's just to help protect the turret under there. The original, or the vehicle that this is based on, actually has the wall panel shapes. Um, but I decided that it needed a little bit extra protection. And I sort of like the fact that it's given it a more chunkier nose. Um, it, it still feels sleek enough to be a speeder, but it feels chunky enough to be a combat one, I quite like. Uh, it does have some carbon composite. I do believe that's carb. That's the wrong one. I do believe that's carbon composite, yeah. And uh, some of the other blocks around that are just decorative. It does have a little bit of armor, but the armor itself is also steel. But the armor protects the turrets here and, of course, the driver. That's steel as well. But there are some decorative blocks that are carbon composite. Uh, the floor, if you can call it that, is mostly container extensions. Mm, yeah, uh, that bit is steel. That's carbon composite. So it's sort of a mixture of everything. Right, next then is resource gathering and production. Now, this is the first video where I've actually mentioned this segment because every other vehicle where I have been doing this uh, format of video the resource gathering and production has been covered in its role for example these miners i talk about the drills in its role and therefore i've got nothing to talk about in the resource gathering so resource gathering there is none but production it does actually come with a constructor i was very tempted to which is accessible from the outside by the way just there i was very tempted to remove that and give it extra thrusters but I couldn't really... Uh, they, they would need to be small thrusters. Oh, hang on. I just figured out I could have moved that to there. And then I could have done a medium. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, so, there we go. That's the end of that. So, the next topic is storage and other devices. Now, although it is a combat speeder, it is fairly good to be used for POI assaults. So you've got the weaponry, I mean, it would need to be a low level POI, but you've got the weaponry to take out a couple of turrets and defend yourself against drones and infantry. And you've got some containers for bringing home all the loot. So there's one in each side and they are both 1750 of your SUs. It does have an ammo box, obviously, for the weaponry, and that's 875 SUs. And then that's it for storage. There is no... Oh, sorry, no. <laughs> Mini fridge behind the other shutter opposite the fuel one. So now that's the end of the storage. Uh, other devices, it comes with two armor lockers, one on each side, which I suppose you could count as storage, but not really. You can keep your lock, uh, armor boosters in there and spare armors. Uh, it has a detector there. The Wi-Fi is in the middle somewhere-ish. It's there. Oh, I forgot to mention during the propulsion and stuff that it does actually have an RCS to help improve its handling. Um, as you saw, it has the usual cockpit display that tells you which keybinds will control which toggleables. Let me give it a bit of thought because I think that's the end of it. Oh yeah, it has a couple of lights. One there, a matching one on the other side and one that helps light up the ammo box. I do believe that's everything. I mean, if you want me to mention the docking pads, there are five, but, you know, <laughs> they're not that important, really, so long as there's at least one, but I like to make it look like it would at least hold the weight of the vehicle. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's all of the devices. There's the projector, by the way, for the the hollow display there. Right, 
Next then, we need to talk about its shortcuts and signals. So, we have a propulsion etc. as usual in the custom device groups shortcuts. That turns off and on all of the thrusters and all of the hover engines as well as that RCS. The next one, headlights and the one after that, tail lights are fairly self-evident. There's the tail lights and there's the headlights. <laughs> They do point forward, by the way. They're not diagonal headlights. They, Yeah, they do point forward. Uh, the next one is illumination. And that's the other lights that I showed you. As for the custom signal shortcuts, we have power save. Doesn't really do much on this vehicle, but I always like to include it. So that does, in, that does turn off that projector and the Wi-Fi. Anything else? No, I'm pretty sure that's it. Because everything else can be turned off in other ways. Um, so, I don't like putting the fridges on my power save. Because if you've got food in there, you don't want to turn the fridge off. So, I like to leave that manual. The fridge, by the way, comes... Oh, for Pete's sake, I keep pressing the wrong button. The fridge does come turned off. Um, by default, when you spawn the vehicle in, there's no point it using up any power until you've got your sandwiches in it. Um, I so there we go. And I think, yeah, other than the turrets and fixed guns, the last one is production, which is simply the constructor there. Right. Oh, I will show you quickly, and I should have done this during the propulsion and stuff bit. Oh. Grr. So, uh, its stats for its mobility is here, 45 degrees per second on its yaw, forward propulsion of 43 meters per second squared, which isn't too bad. Like I said, I'm sure you can go on the workshop and find stuff that is faster, but it's only faster up to its top speed, which is 100 meters per second, I think it is. So, I mean, that's still not terrible. Just over two seconds to reach max speed, which isn't bad. Um, oh, I didn't mention as well the CPU. It is tier two. It's just under. Uh, and if you need any more, I would recommend taking the constructor out. Most people will have their production at their base I expect so it's kind of an expendable piece of equipment if you need more CPU not sure what you would put in the place maybe some more CPU extenders if you needed it but there we go uh, and well I would say lastly is upgrading but I sort of touched on it already um, I, I, yeah, okay I will go through it next bit is upgrading so I did think about putting them on small thrusters there and there to help with its lateral thrust but I didn't really think so it, it didn't help with its yaw when I actually tried uh, I think its yaw went up to 47 which is f you know slightly better with its driving and turning while you're driving to avoid trees and chisel but when it comes to aiming the Gatling guns, that's actually detrimental to aiming. So I left them off. Uh, although, if you want more lateral thrust for strafing, you could in fact remove that block and the matching one and pop on a couple more s'mores. I, I don't remember what its lateral thrust would have been then. I'm going to guess it would take it up to around 27 or something like that, I guess. Something like that. Um, but again you would probably need to take the constructor off for that I I might actually suggest as I <laughs> just figured out just now what's behind this block a fuel tank I, I'm not sure it's worth it maybe a small so my, I might suggest moving that small thruster to there putting another one there doing the same on the other side obviously having a slanted medium thruster in this gap here for more forward thrust same on the other side and maybe two more smalls here 
if if you want a bit more acceleration if you want right so i think that's the end of the tour so thank you very much for taking an interest in the combat speeder i hope you get some enjoyment out of it and hopefully i'll see you in another video for a different build so thank you again and goodbye <laughs>